Good evening, everybody, and a very warm welcome to One Hunt Racing Season 23, round number eight, as we head to the Ardem Forest in spa Francorchamps for the Belgian Grand Prix, the top tier of this league. It's going to be very, very exciting indeed. Timo has a sizable lead in the championship. Will anyone be able to stop him? We'll have to wait and see. My name is Jess Ball and I wasn't here last week and neither is my usual co-commentator. And by the way, thank you to uh, Mike and Jamie for filling in. But we're, jo we're joined by Steve again. Steve, how, how are you doing this week? Because you, you weren't here either. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very, very good, Jess. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing good as well. Now, Belgium is such an iconic track for league racing. One of the longest on the calendar at 7.004 kilometres. And a track which promotes overtaking and also has a threat of rain as well. But we'll look at the standings very quickly before we head to the racing. Now, Timo currently leads on 139 points. He won last time out in Portugal. He had a really great win in the wet conditions. And he made some great moves as well. Nicola Sora only managed fifth that day and got second place in the standings. See Unarmed got fourth last week and got 86 points. J. Cole, really good comeback for him to finish P2. One of his best results of the season besides guitar. He's on 85 points. Brendan in fifth on 71. Colin in sixth on 57. Aaron White, another podium for him. He likes his podium. He got another third place last week. So really good for him. And we got Casper in an eighth on 44. Then we got Lukey on 31, joint with Nick as well. And we've got Larkin, Axelot, Bim Pai, Conzo, Delta Hunter, Waitsy, Calzo, Posh Evans, and Tony in that order. Constructor standings. Um, I, I can't remember how I check constructor standings, actually. It doesn't give me the option. Ah, there we go. It gives me the option for the constructor standings if they decide to load. There we go. Alpha Tat, and we currently lead in the way on 179 points. We got Haas in second on 113. Alpine in third, 112. Alfa Romeo in fourth on 88. Joint with Mercedes. Williams in sixth on 84. McLaren seventh on 73. Red Bull Racing in eighth on 72. And then Ferrari in ninth on 41. And Aston Martin not getting their seasons where they wanted to be in last place. But long story short, Timo is dominating at the moment. Can anyone beat him? Yeah, that's the big question. I mean, what, he's won the last five, six races in a row? And he's just seeming unstoppable at the, in, at the minute. He's got the rhythm on the game, and he's been super, super consistent with it. I mean, of course, as you say, last time out in Portugal, he did win again um, a wet weather drive. That could be the same here again. The, the rain is always a threat around Belgium, um, and it's probably one of the most likely circuits to rain uh, at. So we, we could be in for a spicy Grand Prix, maybe. But, I mean, Timo, he just seems unstoppable at the moment. And he's got one hand on the championship at this stage. Uh, where are we at now? Yeah, and I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens. It's interestingly that Timo's gone on the intermediate tyres at the moment, so I'm guessing he wants to try something unorthodox and save a bit of soft for the race then as well. Track was built in 1921, and then the track was redeveloped in 1979 after it was 14.9 kilometres originally, and it, it, it take a few streets of the Stabilo region. Um, but it's still the longest on the calendar anyway as well. And there was a 1939 event um, which happened um, before the World War. And then there was also native track in 1947. And it holds around the inaugural Formula 1 World Championship back in 1950. And we're still here today as well. And obviously it's changed what it was as well where it is now. I think it was 2007 was the last updated moment of the track. For Sir Brendan, by the way. He is retired because he has taken his engine penalty, so he won't be taking any further part of qualifying. No one else has taken an engine penalty tonight, so that's uh, one less driver to worry about. But Nick heads across the final few corners, the bus stop chicane. He used to be a bus stop, believe it or not. That's why he's called the bus stop chicane. And Nick up to the line, and it's going to be P3 with a 142.335. Posh Evans currently fastest, with Owen White in second, and Nick in third, and Bumpai. Jumps the top of the standings, and that is it for the time being. Yeah, very, very close, though, between that top three, about three hundredths separating them at the moment. So very, very equal in terms of pace between those three. Of course, Timo on the Inters, that's not a representative that time from him. He's just going to be saving a set of softs. That's got a still lot of good on Inters. <laughs> I mean, yeah, to only be about five seconds off the pace 
it's a very, very good lap. I mean, except from the middle sector, the intermediates don't really burn out too much. They don't over overheat too much. Yes, the track's dry and everything, but there's not many corners in that final and the first sector to really burn out the tyres until you get to that middle sector. It's very t tight and twisty. That's going to be another talking point. What setup do you go for? Do you go for a middle sector-based one or final and first sector? You'll probably go for a lower downforce setup to maximise the run down the Kemmel Straight and through Blanchimont into the bus top chicane. So expect a lot of drivers to be maybe a bit slower in that middle sector and then faster through the first and the final sector to be with that lower downforce setup compromising their cornering to get that better run down the straights. Interesting you say about those setups because that was one of the questions that the, the drivers were asked in the pre-race interviews as well. Team, uh, quite a few drivers are not sharing anything much on uh, whether they prefer lower downforce setup for the straights and higher downforce for the corners. Team, uh, Timo and Kaffa keeping it very, very quiet. Nick saying he's not too sure um, in regards to that. Colin said he's definitely going for a lower downforce setup, so expect him to be fast on the straight. Luke, he's saying he's not giving away any secrets um, in terms of setup. Very, very cheeky. I'm just trying to see if anyone else. Kanam saying he's not too sure, might see what his teammate is running. Nicola Soro saying he can't reveal that either. You'll see if I have a rocket ship on the straight or not. So, in a short summary, they're not going to be revealing too much, which is uh, unfair because we don't know who's going to be fast on the straight and who isn't until we get to the race. Yeah, I mean, you can sort of get a guide down uh, through this qualifying session by just sort of looking at two people's lap and comparing, say, their speed or their first sectors. But, um, yeah, it, we, that's when we really find out who's gone for what is in the races. Qualifying, you can make up that time, as we saw uh the red bulls do against the mclaren and then through that middle sector in real life the mclaren was so much qu quicker and could gain so much more time back on the red bulls that it sort of null and voided it through that middle sector so we're, we're just gonna have to wait and see what these drivers prefer axlock is on the lap as he's heading into puon now seventh gear lifts off the throttle slightly manages to keep it valid though keeps it tight to the inside so then Set himself for the outside for the Piff Path Chicane. A bit wide from that first apex. Second apex, though, hit quite nicely. Again, be careful not to invalidate. Into the first Stavolo. Fourth gear. Try again not to invalidate as you run all the way out to the exit of the circuit. And then through Stavolo, too. This is an important run now through Blanchemont. You've got to be so, so precise through here. Going a tad bit wide on entry or on exit could cost you either invalidating your lap or a few thousands of a second, which could be the difference between you and pole. Now into bus stop, down to third gear, over the first curb, and you flick it into the second. Be super careful on the power over the bump. DRS wide open for Axlock. What's it going to be? It's a 142.0. Puts him up into P4. That's a decent lap from Axelot. An interesting fact about the gear changes around this circuit. Apparently, there are 49 gear changes around the lap, around the lap of Spa Fogashon, which I find quite fascinating, actually. As Delta Hunter unfortunately has retired, he's binned it somewhere, think, it looks like. I think he's Even crashed it into the pits. Yeah, he crashed into the pits. So that is his qualifying done. And that is all good for Delta Hunter because in pretty much his team is currently last in the constructors that is not where we would expect them to be and that's not going to help them at all i think even brent no brennan's still going to finish uh start behind anyway so he's not going to be at the back at least but he's going to start no higher than ninth place for delta hunter here comes larkin then as well heading through the first sector passing to the middle sector now the corner of no name just a few Things to point out. Oh, as uh, I said, that Larkin is just invalidated through no name. He just went a bit wide. Just a few things to point out due to a few troubles in other tiers earlier on tonight. Red flags will be reduced. That's what um, it was planning to anyway. But well, formation lap, until it's fixed, is off because we had um, a, f um, a glitch where someone couldn't even get to their grid slot, um, which meant that the the race didn't get going so we had to restart it so yes no formation up tonight which means everyone's tires will be really really cold which is not good for some people but good for others just a few things to point out there but boom by 141.6 a driver that i wasn't expecting to be up there 
in P1 for now. We are going to see Timo go on his lap at the moment and no, he's not going to go on his lap because he invalidated. But Bumpai is a driver that's pretty much come to his own it's pretty much since probably around round three, I would say. He's a massive improvement. He started off like near the back. He finished 13th in round one. He, he did not start round two. In round three, he DNF'd and then he started to get some really decent points um, in, um, I think it was uh, round number four, I think it was. But then he got very unlucky in terms of strategy and instant in the, in the final few rounds. But th it's great to see him being up there and in, in, in the top now. He, he's definitely improving on this game. Yeah, I mean, he was a bit unfortunate with incidents in earlier rounds. Most of the time he was just collected by either a spinning car or just... Errors that were just not really needed to be made by him, but he has always had the pace. He, he's always looked to be up there recently, and it's just never came to fruition. So we're just going to have to wait and see what happens today. He might be starting on pole position here. Yes, Timo, Nicolo Soro, Larkin haven't set a lap time yet, but at the moment, a very, very good lap time. About 13,000, uh, no, sorry, 17,000 quicker than Posh Evans. And we know Posh Evans does have the pace on his day. And uh, so expect some big things from Bumpai at the moment. But his teammate Nicolo Soro is finally on a lap. I think that's uh, who just went up the order. I think that might have been Nick going up into P4. Um, but Nicolo Soro on a lap and he's has through no name. Nicely done through there. Now into Puan, of course, championship contender is Nicolo Soro to Timo. But of course, Timo does have quite a substantial lead in the championship after winning uh, quite a few of the last few races through Piff Path, maybe a bit wide from the second apex for Nicolo Sora there. Now through Stavolo, one nicely done, using all the track he possibly can on the exit. 13-1 in the middle sector, apparently purple, but we know about the purple sectors in the middle sector on this game. Boom, Pi goes even quicker, a 140-15. Can Nicolo Soro challenge that? Yes. He was aiming to beat Bumpai anyway, but can he beat his teammates' improvement? Down into bus stop, over the first curb, nicely done. Now into the second, a bit, maybe a tad bit wide from the apex. DRS open for Nicolo Soro. Where's it going to be? It's good enough for provisional power. We're on it 41.1 and quite a substantial way ahead of his teammates. That is a massive margin for Nicolo Soro, and he said in his pre race interview that he felt very confident going into this race. He said, iconic chat, love it. And he didn't do any wet practice. Well, let's hope that we don't get a similar situation to last week where it was absolutely chucking it down as well. And he's not really helping his teammate um, in terms of qualifying. He doesn't want to rely on the switch stream. He wants to do it alone. And with him doing it alone, that is very, very good indeed. As we've got a yellow flag, that is CRNAM that spinned it just before Lecom. So his lap Quality session is over, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame, but we've got plenty more drivers still out on lap times. I know Nicolas Soros just set a lap and it still said he's on zero laps of soft tyres, so uh, ignore that. That's going to be very confusing to get used to as well. But yeah, brilliant stuff from Nicolas Soros. A bit of a shame for um, C Unarmed, but I think he's just got to pretty much do what he said in his interview really he loves racing around this track one of the greatest but i think he's got he's got a hope that there's pretty much rain on the horizon but we haven't had anything about rain in the chat so for sea unarmed he's just gonna hope that people make a mistake yeah i mean this circuit is easy to make mistakes but it's still quite an easy one to overtake on so expect maybe uh apart from the front few drivers a little drs train to uh form uh, throughout the grid, little groups of DRS trains probably around this circuit. So just look out for that. It's so easy to overtake. Of course, we do have the two stops. Just put, you can push on your tyres quite nicely uh, on your stints because obviously the tyre wear on this game isn't too major uh, when you're doing a two stop. So they can just push flat out and around the circuit like this, you don't really gain too much tyre wear either but Colin Mason he's coming to the line what can he set on his final run of the session he goes up into third a 1 minute 41.600 and that's actually a very good lap time there from Colin he's always been consistently up there hasn't he but just hasn't found the podium just yet 
He's been so close and he's got to admit he was quite close uh, in a few races this season, but he's never got round to it. But he doesn't feel as confident going into tonight, but if he could capitalise on everyone else's mistakes, then uh, he would absolutely love it as well. Of course, he's had his teammate throughout the season to help him a little bit. He does have a stretch strat in mind and I have seen him do some practice. So he does have an idea of what the best setup is for him. And it is easy to screw up qualifying, so he's not going to rely on his teammate too much. But if the opportunity presents itself, that is what he's going to be doing. So Colin will be going into the pits very shortly, as that will be his qualifying over because he's out of sync with everybody. Everybody else will be on runs, and the first driver that will be setting a run will be our championship leader, Timo, who's the only driver in this top 12 who hasn't served representative lap time yet. But we still got Larkin and J. Cole still to go. He's got to be at 141.1. I think I could sense a 140 in him. 140.9, 140.8. He's probably going to leave it in the dark. And oh, what are you on? We almost was going to go into the pits then. But uh, he's going to head towards turn number one at La Source. Let's see if he can uh, blow us all away and get near the front. Yeah, that's certainly going to be the question. I mean, Timo, of course, been on such superb form lately. He's really been in the rhythm of this game. But here we go now, heading down into a rouge, then up the hill into the rally on over the hill. Now, this is a very, very important momentum zone of the circuit. Down the Kemmel straight into Le Combe. You've got to get your braking perfect. Turn the car in at the perfect time as well to really nail this corner. Braking just before the 50 meter ball, down to fifth gear, rides that inside curb, rides the second apex. Now into Malmedy, nicely done through there as well. A little bit of a wobble though on the exit. Now in to Rivage, nicely done once again. Fourth gear into no name. Now you drop it down to fourth once more. Again, just try to keep it. Un, uh, on the track and don't invalidate it. Poo on. Such an easy track to just go that tiny bit wide or turn into early, but so far seems to be nicely done there from Timo. We'll see what his middle sector is compared to Niccolo Soros. So now into Piff Path, nicely done through the first apex and nicely done through the second, getting the car turned in nicely. Seems to have a lot of rotation in his Alpha Tauri. Middle sector split now. He's a tenth quicker than Niccolo Soro in that middle sector, so we could maybe see a 1 minute 40 on the cards. Now, as he's heading down through Blanc... Actually, no, sorry, up through Blanchemont, what will this be heading into the bus stop? He needs to nail this if he wants any chance of beating Niccolo Soro, breaking out 100 metres, down to third gear, nicely over the first curve, maybe a bit, launching him a tad bit too wide into the second part of the chicane. But what's it going to be for Timo? Is it provisional pole? No! That final chicane, and Owen Wyatt goes up into second place. But Timo, a 1 minute 41.3, it's not pole position. It's at best third place on the racetrack. Who else is setting lap times? Colin Mason uh, has been dropped down by his teammate. Nick goes up into fifth place. Posh Evans is on a lap now. There's also a Red Bull in front of him, I think, of Calzo. What can Calzo do? He stays in tenth. Posh Evans to the line. He goes up to third now. Timo now down to fourth place. What about Larkin and Jaco? Oh, Larkin's crashed at the final corner. There's an Alst Aston Martin coming across the line. That's act up. It's all up to J. Cole now. Can he beat uh, Nicolo Soro? No, he cannot. It's good enough for P13. But Nicolo Soro is on pole position. He's championship rivals down in fourth. That's exactly what he needs if he wants to find some points back in this championship fight. Look at that. 68,000 separating Nicolas Soro and Owen White. And Timo could only manage fourth place. The top four separated by less than two temps. So... I think we've got a race on our hand, ladies and gentlemen. This tier is going to be amazing, so make sure you uh, stay tuned in for that. So, Nicolas Soro, one of our championship protagonists, will be starting on pole with Owen in second. Posh Evans in third, Timo in fourth, Boompa in fifth, Nick and Colin in sixth and seventh, Casper in eighth, Axelot in ninth, and we've got Calzo in tenth. We've got C Unarmed, Lukey, J. Cole, Delta Hunter, Larkin and Brendan. We got Larkin and Delta Hunter failed to set a lap time either by crashing out or just having issues. And then obviously Brendan serving his engine penalty. Now, before we uh, go for the race, we've got to be very, very quick. Let's have a quick word of our sponsors. Next up, we're racing our sponsor in the lead by providing an e elite ES1 sim racing seat to our potential driver's champion and also an ERS2 racing seat to people who are second and third in each tier 
and S Tech Sim Sports are providing a Invicta Sim Racing boots to the driver who has the shortest combined quality time. Mystery shirt box that will go to the winner of 100 Racing Driver Rankings. Our partners Vespertina are providing our visual apparel. Elite Racing Team that are sponsoring our trophies and also the ERT Going Gets Tough Award. And SimGrid that are powering our community and platform through the standings. A massive shout out goes to those guys without those sponsors that uh, one have racing wouldn't be like they are today we do have rivalries to go through but i don't think we are going to have enough time to go through them i think unfortunately as we are about to start but nick and lukey were called in, in the rivalries and he, and uh, they were asked are they confident of being the other driver and nick said i think luke and i will always be rivals because we have such long history that being said it's more of a friendly rivalry and we're both happy for each other when we do well that being said if we fight for wins each week and a championship things might be different i think that's with all rivalries in this uh, championship not gonna lie if you're good friends um, they're going to be happy for each other unless they uh, um, fight for championship. Anyway, five red lights are on. We've got Nicolas Soro on par, own right alongside. And we are underway in Belgium. Nicolas Soro gets a really good start. And so does one of the Red Bulls, actually. I think that might be Casper. But all the way down into turn number one, Nicolas Soro breezes ahead of everybody else. Timo gets ahead of Porsche Evans. But Porsche Evans trying to dive it back up the inside in towards our route. It's going to be hard to go side by side by, like that as well. But everyone has made it clean through turn one so far Timo brilliant move from him Nick's had a good start as well up to fifth but he's under pressure from Boom by heading into towards Lacombe now as well Owen almost got Nicolas Sora up the line as well and Timo almost got past Owen as well heading towards Bruchel now for the first time it is very very tight stuff oh a few people going wide there through the ne these next set of corners this is, this is really great stuff but Nicolas Sora still holds on to the lead yeah, he's had a really good lead as well. Owen Wyatt trying to get past into the com really has affected him. And now he's lost the DRS as it stands to Nicolo Soro once it gets enabled on that free. Delta Hunter and Sion are battling further back. I think Delta Hunter's got that one. We've got a real split on the strategy here between drivers on the softs and the mediums. We've got, actually, I'd say about even 50-50 between the field on who's on what tyre. But now Owen Wyatt really starting to drop some time to Nicolo Sora, so he needs to try to find it somewhere, and he needs to do it quickly, because he does have the fast-charging Timo right behind him in his Alpha Tauri. Posh Evans held on for as long as he possibly could on those mediums. We have Colin versus Calzo now. This is over P8. We also have Timo further up, going for a move on Owen. He's got the move done. He's locked the rear tyres. He's managed to stay ahead, though, of the McLaren, and that's the Alpha Tauri, your championship leader, up into second place. He's now going to hunt down his championship rival, Nicolo Soro, for the race lead, but 1.6 seconds. It's going to be hard to close down, knowing how evenly matched these two are. And uh, Timo does have a lot of work on his hands. Further back, Brendan's made it up two places at the moment. Larkin's still on his inside, though, as they head down into a rouge. But Brendan gets that one. But at the moment, it's Nicolo Soro leading the way from Timo. But Owen's going to the inside down the Kemmel straight. He lets off. He keeps. He lets Timo stay ahead. He just wants to DRS later on. And uh, Posh Evans may be going for the move. No, he's just going to sit behind as well. But as again, again as it stands, Nicolo Soro ahead of his championship rival, Timo. And that could be some very, very crucial points. Eating away at his championship lead. What we're seeing when I'm analysing this part of the race, really, is if you're in front, well, if you're pretty much behind another car, you're able to follow them quite easily and get the toe that you desperately needed. But... If you're uh, if you're like in front, you could struggle. Unless you're Nicolas Soro, who's definitely definitely pulling away like no tomorrow. But Timo definitely doing a great job to catch up to the house drivers. Axelor gets past Colin to seventh place, so he's having a better start compared to previous rounds as well. He felt he could have done well in Portugal, but didn't do so. But maybe this could be the race where he can shine a little bit as well. But Colin is under pressure from Calzo, so maybe. The lower downforce may have compromised him a bit in the corners, but he's definitely pulling away on the straight. So I have to say, it's helping him in certain corners, but in, in, in tight corners like this, it's going to be very difficult. As Colin's gone a bit wide, actually, going through the bus stop chicane, and Nicolas Sora and Timo has traded fastest laps from each other as well. And I think it is just between the two of them currently so far. It looks like one of the Alpines trying to go side by side into turn number one, but... 
not able to at this stage. But let's watch the top three. DRS is activated then. So if they're within one second of the car ahead, then that's where they could start going for moves. I don't think Timo is going to go for Nicolas Sora on this occasion, but looks like the top four are pretty much even on pace. And I'm very impressed with Posh Evans able to keep up with the soft runners at this stage. And I've, I've done a race around here a few hours ago, and I know the softs do tend to die very quickly if you're running a lower downfall setup. Yeah, they will hit the cliff a bit more quicker than if you're running high downforce because you're just understeering through this middle sector, really. It's just natural understeer. There's a yellow flag. Who's that for? That's for Colin. Colin has gone round. I think that's down at the Brussels hairpin. Yes, it is. It's the Brussels hairpin. He's gone round. And Colin Mason, he's race. He didn't really show much pace on the first two laps. And he's now round. I think there might have been contact with, I think, Axlock heading into uh, the Brussels hairpin. And he's down into the last place. Does have time to make it back up, though. We're only on lap three of 22. So a long way to go in this one. But strategy is going to be a real big factor here. I think Posh Evans could do a double soft uh, after his medium stint. Where, uh, whereas everyone else has to go on to a set of mediums. So Posh Evans could be in a really comfortable place here. But look at Timo. Four attempts behind Nicolo Soro. A lap ago, it was about 1.4. A big slide as well for Nicolo Soro. He's really starting to struggle on his tyres in his Haas. The AlphaTauri behind. Would he go for a move into the Com? Let's just wait and see as he, they head through the source now. They're all just following each other, this top four, one by one through the first corner. Now heading down the hill, which will then lead back uphill through Arouge and Radion. Timo tucking into that slipstream quite nicely as they head up over the hill of Radion. DRS will be open for the Alpha Terry behind. They're going to, they might go side by side here. A little battery is used from Timo to the inside. He will go. And he gets the move done before the breaking zone. And what about Owen? He just can't get close enough to the Haas. And Timo now takes your race lead. Your championship leader really is flying in this race. He's flying like no tomorrow, isn't he? Absolutely fantastic. A very good move. And I'm just looking at his overall stats. His worst ever finish was P3 in round number three and also in the sprint race as well. Apart from that, He's got P1 for most of the season. Mr. Consistency is key. On 139 points, for those of you that didn't watch the start of the stream, and there's a big gap between himself and Nicola Soro. And we do not have long to go until the end of the season. After this, we do have a break week, and then we've got um, the sprint round for Spain. Then we head to Singapore. Then we got uh, Silverstone and United States. So not much opportunities for a lot of drivers to get up there if they want to but you never know Timo could make a mistake but he seems to uh, be pulling away quite comfortably on Nicolas Soro so it is all now going to be between the likes of Owen and Posh Evans to wheel them in and try and get past a yellow flag that is unfortunately for Delta Hunter who's probably having real issues unfortunately so uh, let's hope that gets fixed soon but I'm keeping an eye on Posh Evans right now the softs pretty much die away very quickly after five laps. So expect Porsche Evans to be right on these guys from the get-go now. Yeah, I mean, he can go the longest out of these drivers. He can just use his medium tyres effectively, just manage really behind these guys and wait for that perfect opportunity. But, I mean, to be honest... Here comes Owen, actually, on Nicolo Soro. Nicolo Soro didn't get a DRS from Timo. And Owen Wyatt's just breezed past in his McLaren. Calzo's got past Axelot in the background. That looks like a nice battle brewing. Brendan. The hide has actually done the inside. J. Cole, Brendan, Axelot. I think that's Lukey as well. All going side by side as they now head through Malmedy. Larkin's getting involved as well. as contact. There's three wide here between Lukey, Casper, and Larkin. Larkin gets ahead. Casper, can he get past Lukey as well? It's side by side as they head through the Brussels hairpin. And further up j cole versus brendan uh j cole i think just gonna stay ahead uh no sorry axlock sorry and j cole j cole just gonna get ahead of axlock but this battle really really nice really clean driving by these drivers so far they're using the corners effectively and managing to keep out of each other's way but larkin around the outside of brendan can't get the move done a little bit of contact there with lukey but nothing too major brilliant driving from all five of these drivers actually no sorry six of these drivers to keep it on the road and not make any contact while going like two to three wide 
I have to say, huge respect from all these drivers. I think in for some instances they could have ended up in the gravel or even in the wall, but they're doing a great job to keep it on the road as we got our first pitter. Nicola Sora, you could tell he was struggling, so we thought, you know what? Take the opportunity for an early undercut and box for a set of the mediums. Or maybe you'll go on another set of softs, maybe, as well. It's a potential openness of strategy but he's going to go on the mediums as predicted and he's going to stretch those out to about lap 15 16 and then take those to the end from there but i'm sure almost certain timo's made a mistake timo has made a mistake somewhere because owen wyatt breezes past timo and takes a lead this grand prix so i think timo steve has pushed those soft ties too much Owen has pretty much kept it in an operating window, it looks like. And that's why Owen's taking the lead. But watch out for Posh Evans. He's a candidate to get this race lead as well. So these two have got to be on their toes. Oh, Posh Evans had a big slide through um, No Name once again. But brilliant move from Owen Wyatt. Yeah, Owen, really, really strong pace at the moment. And it, Timo was losing a bit of time to Nicolo Soro through the middle and final sector last time around before Nicolo Soro did actually pit. So maybe Timo has just pushed those soft tyres just a tiny bit too much. And this could affect him big time uh, come the pit window because Owen, within a really, really strong opportunity to maybe even win this race in the long term. Yes, we're only on lap six, but to be honest... Lap count wise, it is a very, very short circuit. So it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, I reckon Owen uh, and Timo might react to Nicolo Soro this time around. But Nicolo Soro obviously did get those five, that five seconds speeding in the pit lane. But in comes Owen. This could be a really, really good strategy call from him. And Posh Evans also into the pit lane. A very early pit stop here from Posh Evans. He'll probably go onto the softs and just try. Take no, double mediums, I think. I think he's going to go for double mediums. It's too early to do double sets of softs. They won't make it last long. No, he's going on hards. He's going on the hard tyres. So does he know something that we don't? Hards around here, by the way, are absolutely pants. So I don't know why Posh Evans is going for it. But, you know, maybe he he likes the hard tyres better. And uh, let's see how that worked in terms of positions. Owen has got ahead of Nicola Soro. So the overcut worked for Owen Wyatt there. But I think Nicola Soro is going to probably breeze past him anyway. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But Owen doing a really great job there. Very good pit stop from him. And we'll see what happens with Timo. I think Timo could still get out ahead if that was the case. If we could see something similar. But Brendan under pressure from Axelot and Jacob once again. Still going side by side into Legom. Absolut covers to the right hand side. J. Cole to the left. And J. Cole has to force for 11th place. Absolut for 10th. Great battle in there as well. And these guys also have pitted. So pretty much the only ones that have not pitted are your top six. Everyone else has. They're probably praying for a safety car. And there's an 80% chance, believe it or not, for a safety car. And if they get one now, then that's pretty much screwed the ones that have uh, stayed out unless they want, want to go onto another set of the medium tyres. But Timo has to come in. And even though he's got a decent gap between himself and Nick, he has to because the softs are dying and the undercut is so powerful to not come in. And yes, he does come in now. Yeah, it's now going to be all about where does he come out in relation to the likes of Posh Evans, Owen and Nicolo Soro. And again, Nicolo Soro does have that penalty, so that could affect him uh, come the end of this race. But Owen Wyatt... Just, he doesn't need to defend too much. If Nicolo Soro gets by, just sit in the slip, uh, the DRS in the slipstream. Timo's in, puts on those mediums. Where does he come out in relation to these other drivers? He's been passed by Nicolo Soro and Owen Wyatt. I think he's Owen actually and been passed ahead. Evans as well. Posh I Evans just behind that inside line for Timo. Really working out against Posh Evans. But Nicolo Soro and Owen... I've done a really strong undercut here. Bumpai gets past Nick. But what about Nicolo Soro versus Owen here? Owen tries to bend the inside very, very late there from the McLaren driver. Nicolo Soro actually not using any DRS down the straight. On the brakes, though, gets the move done. And Owen now demoted to the provisional P2. Nicolo Soro up to provisional P1. But does have that five-second time penalty. So all Owen has to do here is really just get in the rhythm. And just sit and just focus and sit behind Nicolo Soros. Posh Evans also got past Timo there. And that is really crucial, especially with the strategy difference between Posh Evans and Timo. That 
he could be stuck behind this Alfa Romeo for quite a while. Yes, and that is not what he wants. Um, with the, the pace advantage that these mediums have, it's about five tenths each tyre. So between the mediums and the hards, it's around five tenths. And it's going to be a disaster if Timo can't get past Posh Evans at this stage because you can see the gap really starting to increase for these guys. As Larkin, by the way, gets past Calzo in towards Blanchemon. Great stuff there as well. Expect the ones who are staying on the means to potentially do a double soft spin. So they're going to stretch it to about lap 11, 12. Scrap that. Then Pipe's coming. So he's probably saying, Scra um, uh, scrap that, Jess. We're not doing that strategy. So uh, he comes in. Probably going to be another set of mediums because no way the soft's going to get that. I think I'm seeing an Alpine getting a set of mediums on. I believe that's Larkin. Same with, I think, Condo as well. No one is going for a set of softs yet. So they have seen what the softs can do from some of the drivers earlier and they felt like that's not going to work out. Brendan, though, on the other hand, is going for soft tyres now. We will see how that works into effect at the moment. And here comes Owen Wyatt once again on Nicola Sora this time. And I think the, the answer is you do not want to be the one that's leading going into the final lap at this stage with these drivers on even pace. And Owen has got past Nicola Soro and Owen's in the net lead of this race. The only driver to have not pitted is Nick. He's leading on track, but he's not a net race leader, as it were. Yeah, really, the slipstream and DRS effect heading down that main straight. Bumpai now picks up a three-second time. Uh, not main straight, sorry. Uh, the Kemmel straight. Um, it really is a big factor to come to the end of this race. I mean, of course, Nicolo Soro does have that five-second time penalty. But if you're someone like Timo, you're not going to be panicking too much that you're not in the lead of this one or provisional race lead, should I say. And you're just going to want to be slowly creeping up to the two guys in front. And does seem Timo's really unlocked this medium compound. He's really starting to push on uh, to the back of Nicolo Soro. But... Again, strategy as well. We thought the mediums could go for a long, long way, but they've only lasted around about nine laps for some of these drivers. Eight, nine laps, and they've already decided to come in for a pit stop. That could be crucial come the end of this race. I mean, Nick can box now. I would say put on a set of the soft compound tyres and then do a double soft. It could work for Nick because of how he's boxed and where he's boxed. Yes, he's going onto the softs. This could be crucial for Nick's race because he will come out in that gaggle of cars that are battling all over P7 on the on the racetrack at the moment, Jake uh, Bumpai just a bit further ahead of these drivers. But those soft tyres can really work from here, and he can take them all the way to about lap 17. And when Nick's come out, he's just gone, uh, come out behind Luki. And uh, now he needs to make those soft tyres work as Nicolo Soro versus Owen. Nicolo Soro just sitting behind once again. He's just waiting. Uh, to build that battery up. Yes, he's got Timo coming at him from behind. But that DRS could be crucial come the end. As Axelok gets past J. Cole into the com. Uh, and it was a nice, easy move there on the brakes for Axelok. And uh, it's kicking off up and down the field as Timo's catching up to the top two. And this scrap here over si uh, sixth place really is starting to get nice and spicy. There's battles happening left, right and centre. It's hard to keep up at times. But if you are liking this action, make sure you leave us a like on this video. Hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell as well. Also follow us on Twitter at One Hub Racing and Instagram at One Hub Racing. You can also join us on Discord too to be kept up to date on anything that's going One Hub Racing. Believe it or not, after this race, we will have four more rounds still to go of this championship we got a break lead because believe it or not we've got guitar and the timings are at an awkward time that we can't move um the the tier the, the tier times around to uh make that change so uh basically what is going to happen is um we're gonna have a break week that week and then we're gonna move that times elsewhere as well i was worried that youtube was gonna have a little bit of a hissy fit there but looks like we are i think a-ok -okay currently on that one but timo has caught right to the back of nicola soro and it's a three-way fight now for this race lead 
Yeah, it certainly is. Timo really is starting to push on. Nicola Soro going to go for the move on Owen. This could be a double overtake. Mika hakkinen esque by Timo if he does try go to the inside of the pair of them. No, but Owen's still on the inside of Nicola Soro. He's managed to stay ahead, but Timo on the outside for the second part of their come on the inside for Malmedy. Gets the move done. There's a yellow flag behind. There's been a crash, and that's for Axlock. Virtual safety car is out. I think Axlock's been tagged by somebody he's lost his front wing but Timo up into second place a really really opportunistic move around the outside of the second part of the com gets the move done and that's crucial for his race as Axlock it was all going so well for him these Aston Martin so so far this season Delta Hunter and Axlock just have had no luck at all no no luck at all from the Aston Martin drivers that's why they're lower down at the moment but Will this be the opportunity for some drivers in the back to do their two stops right now? Because the VFC, they're going to lose so much less time in that. 18.8 seconds is the pit lane loss time. That is nothing compared to obviously what the drivers will experience in endurance racing. Nick's in a very comfortable position in sixth as well. PGG drivers have got to be careful not to get any drive throughs. I had a glitch early on today where I couldn't see if I was if if I was uh, had a countdown between the Delta, which was uh, quite kind of annoying. No one is coming. Oh, Timo or Nick? No, it's Nicholas. Sorry, sorry. Who comes into the box? Now he's styled on softs. He's gonna go on to mediums, and then he's gonna go on to an outset means. He's gonna either make it or break it here. This could be a really gamble strategy. DOS has enabled, safety car has ended. Timo going side by side with Owen White heading towards our Rouge then. This could be huge in terms of if he wins this race. And that's a beautiful stuff. But Owen White is going to get the DRS on a Timo then. And he could use the ERS as well. There was plenty of chance for people to uh, save it just before that. And Owen got past Timo with the DRS and he's now in the race lead. I don't think Timo should have gone for that move because that allowed Owen to get the DRS detection to a T and he now leads his race once again. But Timo is going to charge once again. They're banging wheels a little bit. Heading towards Normandy and the corner of No Name as well. Posh Evans is in this fight. Posh Evans, by the way, is doing a stellar job on these hard tyres. He's, we thought he was going to struggle, but he's loving life. Timo's back in the race lead. Owen in second and Posh Evans is not out of this yet. Yeah, Posh Evans certainly not. I mean, Nicolo Soro going for that uh, pit stop, I think was hoping it would stay out a bit longer because of course he did have to serve that five second time penalty uh, for speeding last time around and he's come out just a tad bit short of what he needed to be if he wanted to undercut the likes of Timo and Owen Wyatt. But Timo really needs to push on now. Get out of the DRS of Owen. He don't want to lose any more time to the McLaren behind him. Posh Evans, I think, also needs to try his best to get past Owen as well. But we just have to wait and see, of course. Pit window for these drivers will probably be around about lap 16, maybe lap, uh, maybe lap 15 uh, for them to come into the pit lane and then box. So we just have to wait and see. Look at Owen on the brakes there into the source, catching up to Timo by about three temps, but again, losing it on the exit because he's carried too much speed into the corner, gone a bit wide from the apex. But DRS will be open for Owen. He does have about half his battery remaining. Timo does have pretty much all his battery remaining in this one. Got to look out for Posh Evans as well behind Owen Wyatt. Three temps is the gap. Don't think he's going to go for the move. Neither is Owen into the comm. But further back, we have Jake Cole versus Lukey. This is going to be spicy. This is over P6 in this race. Will Lukey go to the inside? He is looking for it to the inside of Jake Cole. Gets the move done. And of course, Jake Cole as well. Had some really, really good form in recent races. And uh, has rekindled that spark. And uh, relit that spark from, from the start of the season. Yeah, I think he likes these type of tracks which require more downforce, I think, Steve. Because obviously Qatar, that has a higher downforce track. Portugal require a lot more downforce, whereas Belgium, 
kind of like medium as well. He kind of likes these type of tracks where it takes a while to um, pretty much turn into a corner. So he's definitely doing a decent job on that as well. And it's nice to see the battle between these two. Lukey definitely having one of his best results of the season so far if he could keep this car in a straight line as well. And uh, sooner or later, Lukey could catch up to Nick because those softs are... Not going to be lasting forever. Porsche Evans was catching up to this train of Owen White and Timo, but he's starting to lose a bit of ground on these uh, hard tyres, and he's going to come in. I thought he's going to stretch out very long for a set of the sauce, but I don't know why he's going to go on to a set of the memes now. I thought he would have uh, stretched it out for a set of the sauce, or was he going to go on to a set of soft now? So here he comes. He's going on to a set of the medium tyres. That's going to go until the end of the race, whereas everybody else is going to try and stretch it for the sauce. I know Timo and Owen started on softs anyway, so they can go on to the means if they wanted to. But Posh, brilliant stint on those hards earlier on. And now he's going to pretty much one of the only drivers to have done their two stops. I think Nicolas Soro doing the same, I believe. I'm just checking pit stops. Yeah, so Porsche Evans, Nicolas Soro, Colin, Larkin, Sian Armed, Axelot and Brendan have all made their mandatory two stops as Nicola Soro having a nice battle with Porsche Evans and breezes past him. Yeah, Nicola Soro, I think that's maybe why Porsche Evans box, just to cover off that real threat from Nicola Soro. It's not worked though, but to be honest, he now does have the undercut on Owen Wyatt and Timo, and we know how quickly those softs do fall off and how powerful the undercut is. And I mean, Nicola Soro and Porsche Evans, they will have DRS. Uh, for the next few laps if Owen Wyatt and Timo do decide to uh, stick it out for a bit longer. I won't be surprised if Owen comes into the pits because he really is starting to struggle on these mediums here. He's got no pace until he's about six tenths down on his personal best so far on this lap. So don't be surprised if he comes into the pit lane. We do have that battle still raging on though between J. Cole, uh, J. Cole Lukey and Calzo. Uh, this is all over sixth place. J. Cole and Calzo both having three-second time penalties. Owen and Timo do stay out. At slot now picks up a three-second time penalty. Will J. Cole go to the inside into the bus stop? No, he's just going to sit behind Lukey. The Ferrari stays ahead through the bus stop once again as we're on lap 15 of 22 here. It is starting to be crunch time for these drivers. They do need to make their pit stop soon. The question is when and uh, who boxes first? Timo or Owen Wyatt, and a Nicolo Soro and Posh Evans maybe get the undercut here. Yes, and to be honest, this race has gone so quickly. And I, I have to say, it's uh, pretty much incredible. So make sure you watch for what is going to happen soon as uh, J. Cole then is going to look to the left-hand side in towards to the Lecom, and uh, he does it. I think Calzo has got past Lukey as well. So then three having a very nice scrap. I I I I only caught the end of that, but he's done a awesome job just to keep his car under control. Casper, his teammate though, has picked himself another three second time penalty. Let's look at the time penalties. There we go. So Bumpai's got three, J. Cole's got three, so it's Calzo and Casper. Oh, it was his first one. Okay. And then Axelot has got three seconds of penalties. Everyone is Squeaky clean, but there will be some drivers that are on to, to warning so far. Timo pulling off a great gap to Owen at this stage. So if I was Owen now, I would definitely come into the box just to cover off that undercut as well. I think Nick is definitely starting to struggle on those set of soft tyres because J. Cole could be catching up anytime, anytime soon as well. But yeah, if I was Owen, I will definitely come into the box and he's doing so. So there we go. He's read my mind. Yeah, but also one thing that these drivers have to look out for, especially Nicolas Soro and Posh Evans, I'll say this, they're going to go side by side, maybe into the bus stop chicane. Will Posh Evans go late on the brakes? No, but look, they're catching up to the battle in front of them. That could be detrimental to this undercut strategy. They will get Owen Wyatt. They were close enough to get the move done uh, before they actually needed to uh, actually get past him on the circuit. So they undercut him uh, with ease as now Owen Wyatt comes up the pit lane. There you see him just behind Posh Evans. He'll come out ahead of Casper. But this battle now, they've all got DRS in front of them. This could really slow down the likes of Nicolo Soro and Posh Evans. Lukey goes wide up at Rouge, though, and uh, picks up a three-second time penalty. Calzo gets past J. Cole. Will, Nic uh, will Nicolo Soro be able to get past Lukey? No, he will not. He'll have to sit behind once again. 
and this could be costly to the undercut strategy with these three fighting in front you need to get by as soon as possible Nicola Sora going to be looking to the inside for the Bruce Sells hairpin on Lukey to the inside it goes there's contact made Lukey's forced up wide that can allow Posh Evans through as well he needs to follow Nicola Soro through this train of cars he gets past one as now Nicola Soro will be turning his attention to J. Cole maybe into the piff path chicane he might go for the move it's 16.5 between Timo and Nicolo Soro. Here he comes with a brilliant run through. Puan to wow. the outside through. And Posh Evans needs to follow him through into the first Stavolo, or he will start to lose the DRS to Nicolo Soro in front. J. Cole defending, though, from the Alfa Romeo behind. Nicolo Soro needs to get the move done, heading in to the bus stop chicane. As uh, Posh Evans actually getting past J. Cole, but look who's with him. Owen Wyatt with Posh Evans. He's going to push him through. Blanchamon. J. Cole gets passed by both. And now here comes Nicolo Soro. Can he get close enough to make a move? Owen to the inside. Gets past Posh Evans. Owen gets past Posh Evans. That's crucial as well. But where does Timo come out in all of this? Will he be able to be a uh, keeper ahead of Timo the drivers? Timo and Nicolo Soro. Nicolo Soro to the inside. Being passed by Owen Wire. Owen with a very opportunistic move. Timo gets passed by all these drivers that undercut him. Timo on the mediums. Now Owen versus Calzo. For Ocean Radion. What a move by Owen. Owen is flying here on his soft compound tyres. He will have DRS as well. Race side by side. Nicolo Soro. Owen Wyatt. As they head into their comm now. Who will come out on top? To the inside goes to McLaren. Pass on the outside. And Owen Wyatt keeps the rate, uh, the provisional race. They bump pies, not box. But Owen absolutely flying here. And could be set for his first win this season. And he's, been, he's not actually been off the podium, I don't think, this no. season. In a feature race. And he really is showing why he has always been on the roster. And bravo, Owen, as well. And uh, I'm going to be a bit wide at this point because we did see earlier on how long the softs lasted and uh, how it depleted towards the end of the stint. So I think Nicolas Soro and Porsche Evans will be a bit patient at this stage. And what Owen's got to think about now is he can push now. And then once he's got that gap comfortably within his range, then he could start to uh, pretty much shave his tyres until the end because otherwise we could have a massive scrap for the win between Nicolas Soro, Posh Evans and Owen White. The gap's already, by the way, 1.7 seconds. It's Posh Evans trying to go past uh, Nicolas Soro and I think Timo on the fresher rubber is going to try and do the same. And this is about for second place now. All this is doing is allowing Owen White to increase the gap up front. You can't afford to scrap, guys. You're going to be losing time to the race leader. And we got the last driver to have come in. That is Brumpy. We'll see where he ends up as well. He's going to come out, I think, near the back of all this. Quite a lot of these drivers are on at the soft tyres now. Nick being one of them. Nick could be in a good fight for his best result of the season. And now Timo is going to get the DRS. So is Porsche Evans. Porsche Evans has run out of VRS, to be honest. So here he comes then to the inside. They're going free one into Lecom right now. Pass into the Kemmel straight. Other way around, but never mind. But anyway, Porsche Evans stays behind T Timo for now. And Nicolas Soro is behind too. And he does not want to be in this position currently as well. Timo now has got to focus now to see if he can try and get that gap down. He knows that Owen's tyres will deplete very quickly, so he's just going to be waiting patiently at this stage. Yeah, of course, we could be in for a very interesting end to this one. Owen Wyatt really needs to make those soft tyres work. And Timo, a bit Mika Hakkinen-esque um, on Michael Schumacher. Of course, that was a lap car in the middle in that one. But no, this time it was Nicolo Soro. Colin Mason picks up a three-second time penalty, luckily for him. Everyone down to Lukey behind him also has a three-second time penalty, so he won't lose any places um, for that one. But Timo starting to make some inroads on 1. Owen. 1.2 1. seconds! 1.2 seconds is the gap. Timo looking for another race win here. Going to make it, I think, either six or seven in a row. And he's just been flying ever since he took that win. Uh, earlier on in the season. He's never looked back. 
and he's just been in a form of his own in his Alpha Tauri, of course, winning, doing the double in Vegas as well with two last lap overtakes as Casper has actually been passed by Luki and Calzo and he's actually gone off the circuit. It's unfortunate for Casper there. He's done so well to keep on his medium tyres for so long. Uh, but unfortunately for him, uh, he is now nearly out of the points. Of course, top 12 score points here. And... Um, outside the top 10 and he will lose the place to see on arm as well due to penalties mm, but yeah. 1.1 is the gap it's getting closer we've got about four laps to go in this one owen wyatt got to start to come under some pressure from timo behind i think he's definitely going to play them the the, the, the mika, mika hakkinen type of role as well let's hope we don't get a spa 1998 situation but Timo's not in the Ferrari so uh, we're not going to get that replica luckily but Timo is within DRS range of Owen now so he's going to be on the charge now we do know that the me will be the best tyre advantage due to the crossover period as well so we will see what Timo could do but you never know Owen can hold his own at these final stages we know how good he can be under pressure so I'm very excited for this to unfold. Unfortunately, Porsche is not having the same pace as Timo at the moment. Same with Nicolas Sora as well, because those three were quite close behind each other as well. But as soon as Timo was able to get past Porsche Evans, it was pretty much plain and sailing then, as we're starting the final three laps of this Belgian Grand Prix. Thank you so much to everybody that has been tuning in so far, as I think also... Owen could get some DRS from some lapped cars as well if he's lucky as they head towards La Source. I don't think he's going to do that on this occasion. Both drivers are out of uh, DRS, actually. Actually, no, it's not lapped card. It was, uh, I was following um, the wrong cars, which, uh, which was annoying. But anyway, Timo is going to be charging past Owen Wyatt then. Is uh, Owen going to keep P1 for now? The answer to that is yes. Timo still in second place, but he knows he's got to wait patiently because those softs don't last long. Yeah, he's got to really start to wait here. You can't make any risky moves, of course. He does have a healthy championship lead, so if there is a mistake, maybe dropping behind Nicolas Soro due to a little bit of an incident between these two, he does have that buffer, but he just has to be patient. Sit behind. You've got, your t you've got time in the bag. You've got 3.2 to the closest car behind you. You're not under any pressure, really. As long as you wait, say, give it to the Kemmel straight next lap, you could be in a very, very good position. Owen goes wide through Piff Path. That's going to really affect his run down into Stavolo, which could then affect his run up the hill through Blanchimont. So we'll stay on board. Uh, I'm staying on board with Timo here going to keep within that slipstream of He could McLaren get past him front. there. He could get past here, actually, through Blanchemont. He's looking very good with his lower downforce compared to Owen. Owen has got um, saving some ERS as well as Timo then. So, Timo, if I was him, I would back off for this occasion because the Kemmel straight is, I think, a much better opportunity to get past him. So, uh, Owen making a bit of a mistake there as we're starting lap 21 of 22. If I was Timo, I would back off. Yep, he is backing off. You can tell he wants that DRS heading for a route. He does not want to make the same mistake as he did earlier on in this race where Owen Breeze passed with the DRS and still Hunter picked up a three-second time penalty. Fair play to him, him for still keeping going. But Timo is going to... He, he's pretty much saving his battery for this moment. I don't think he's going to even use it heading towards the Kemmel straight. He's just going to breeze past him anyway. To the inside he goes. And Timo is your race leader for now. Can he increase that gap until the end of this race? It's looking likely, but it's still not over for Owen at the moment. He's going to get a nice little stream from Timo, but I think he's going to be happy with second anyway. He will get his best result of the season as J. Cole breezes past Colin for seventh. Yeah, Timo, he just played his cards right there and just got behind, wait until the Kemmel straight, get by with two and a bit, uh, one and a bit laps to go. So he can now focus, just get his head down, see how much of a gap he can pull on Owen uh, within this one and a half laps that he does have left in this race. He's, well, when he first won, I think it was Brazil, uh, his first victory, um, or maybe even Hungary. And then since then, he has won every single race, sprint or feature, as it stands after that. So he's gone from round 
three or four. I can't remember what one he won. If it was hungry first. He, 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 he won in Imola, and I think he got... Uh, wait, hold on. Let me have a look. Cause, uh, I no, think... He got third in Imola, didn't he? Yeah, he got third, he got third in, Imola. in Imola. He got um, uh, in the sprint. And then the, in the main race in... What was the race in round... Uh, it was Brazil where he got third. And then after that, he just he just won everything. So from Japan onwards, so what? Japan, Vegas, Portugal, Belgium, that's four races, N including the sprint at Vegas. That's five races if he wins today. So he could win five races in a row. We're on the final lap. Owen does have the DRS, but he's not going to get close enough to the back of the Alpha Tari in front of him. It's going to still be so much pressure on Timo, though, but he can probably cope with it. He knows how to deal with stuff like this. At Vegas, he made two last lap overtakes to win both the sprint and the feature. One Casper of them was on the Owen. Of the race. One of them was on um, Owen, yeah, believe it or not. One of them was on Owen. Owen actually, I think, also dropped it out of the penultimate corner in the, in the feature race. Uh, at Vegas. Oh no, it was and a sprint that he dropped it. I, it I, don't, know. It I, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it was one of the races where Owen dropped it out of the penultimate corner. He managed to keep third place though in that race. But Timo, as it stands, heading through Stavolo now, you wouldn't really expect him to make a mistake. The only mistake that he can make at this moment in time is either spinning out of the bus stop chicane or going a tad bit wide and pick up a three second time penalty. But I don't think he's going to do either of those. He just really has to coast to the line here and he will beat Owen Wyatt. Timo, though, heading into the bus stop chicane, he has been a man on absolute rails so far this season. He has been unbeatable. To the line comes Timo to make it five wins from five in the past five races. Timo wins, and he has certainly got one hand on this championship. Owen in second, Posh Evans with a really good strategy. Finally finding form once again up into third. Nicolo Soro fourth, but Timo certainly has one hand on the championship now. Extends his championship lead by more. He is seeming to be inevitable here. Timo, Timo, Timo. What's going to stop Timo at this stage? I think absolutely nothing at the moment. We still got four. I would be surprised if it will. It it could be decided at at, 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 at uh, Silverstone or even Singapore. That could be absolutely crazy, and it just shows how confident he's been all season. And we've got an ERT one too as well. I'm sure the ERT boys will be absolutely loving it right now, Cartley. Of course, they're in different constructors, but Brendan, unfortunately, retires from the session. We've had no safety cars. We only had BSCs. So that is great to see. But I have to say, one of the driver of the days will have to go to Timo, but we will uh, pick um, our driver of the days in a moment. And uh, what's the game going to give it to? Calzo. So Calzo, I have to say Calzo's driven quite well as well today. One of his best results of the season. He's just generally been a clean race. Yeah, it was a very, very good race by these drivers. Uh, I think I just saw Timo's uh, character floating on the podium. But um, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, brilliant race by these drivers. Pretty clean throughout the field especially with how close the battles were they were extremely clean esports drivers take notes um and yeah overall brilliant race by everybody but i think my driver of the day has to be timo just with the strategy he pulled off having to come back through the field uh, through the top three twice and he managed to make it pay off so yeah timo's my driver of the day yeah, I will oh, yeah, ask. I would ask you for, no, ask you for your question in a minute. We'll go through standings yeah. first. So, uh, Timo winning the race from Owen in second, Posh Evans in third, Nicholas Soro in fourth, Nick in fifth. Great, I think it's one of his best results of the season in fifth. Boom Boy in sixth, J Cole seventh, Colin in eighth, Calzo in ninth, and C Alarmed in tenth. Then we got Luki, Larkin, Casper. Delta Hunter, Axelot and Brendan. And by the way, since he retired, I think on the last lap, I think it still gets classified. So that is your order. So um, I'm going to still get time to pick my driver of the day. But since you picked yours, your driver of the day is Timo. What would you lo like to ask Timo? Um, what I want to know is 
What was going through his head while he was uh, behind Owen Wyatt on those final few laps? That is a good question. I'm going to... Well, I'm torn between Posh Evans and Owen, to be honest, mainly because even though they just missed out on the victory, they pulled off some great moves as well. Um... Oh, this, 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 is, this is tight. This is very tight. You know what? I'm going to have to give it to Owen because he made some really great moves in the in the first few moments of his softed to get in contention of the race victory. And I've got to think of a question now, Ben. So my question for him as well, another podium for, for you. Congratulations. Did you think you had a still you still had a chance for the win or were you just fighting for second place? So that was my question for him. And you can vote for all of your driver of the day nominees by going on to Twitter and a little bit later on. But a final word for our sponsors. We've got Next Level Racing, who are sponsoring the lead that are providing some stands and cockpits to some champions and people runners up in the league. Also, Aztec Sim Sports are providing some boots to the driver with the shortest combined quality time. Also, Pure Sim Gear, the, they're providing a pair of sim racing gloves or socks to the driver with the most fastest laps and poles combined. Also, Mystery Shirt Box are providing a shirt box to the winner of 100 racing driver rankings. Our partners, Vespertine, who are sponsoring the lead that are providing our official apparel. Our partners, ERT, that are um, sponsoring our league trophies and also the ERT Go and Get Tap Award. And our partners at SimGrid that are providing their platform for us to do our standings. So, we've got a week's break next week, but in two weeks' time, we'll be heading to the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia, for the Spanish Grand Prix. The removal of the final chicane should be made for some fantastic racing. Yeah, it certainly should. And uh, yeah, hopefully everything goes well and we have another entertaining race. And of course, it's nothing really like Belgium, except from if you take the middle sector out of Belgium. So um, yeah, it's going to be a bit more of a higher downforce circuit. So maybe see some drivers that like the higher downforce, like corners a bit more and just like a little bit of maybe oversteer or understeer really show their form and uh, what they're made of as we head into round nine round nine ladies and gentlemen i can't believe how quick the season has actually gone and this season has been i think non-stop action i think one of the best p1s we've had in a long time so i'd just like to thank everybody that's tuning in make sure you join us in two weeks time on the 15th of october don't join us next week because we're all going to be watching the guitar grand prix so uh yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. But uh, yeah, we said about our sponsors. Make sure you follow us on Twitter as well, at One Hand Racing and Instagram as well. Join us on Discord as well. We've still got Spain, Singapore, Britain and United States still to go. The sprint race will be coming up then on the 15th of October. I'm Jessica Bull. Steve's been Steve. Take care, stay safe. And uh, we will see you in two, in two weeks for some more One Hand Racing action. Until then, have a good evening, everybody. And good night.